So what is serialization? Um, you know, we can talk through the Wikipedia definition, but on some level, this is a word for something pretty simple, which is I want to take the state in an instance of an object or some piece of data, and I want to convert it to a format that lots of other computer systems and computers will understand how to interpret. Um, what I do is I convert it to a string, essentially. Many serialization uh, tools output a string. I don't have to, I could output something else, but um, the string has the benefit of also being human readable. But you know, let's say that I have some data and I wanna put it in a format that many, many, many other computers, many, many other programming languages, many, many other systems are able to understand. Now, this happens naturally when I move things across the internet. So you can essentially think of the internet as a fancy way of sending strings from one computer to another computer. There's no way uh, without sending a string somehow of sort of like sending one computer's memory to another place. If a computer and another computer want to exchange information, they need to send strings back and forth. That's the simplest way to think about it. And so let's say I have some data stored in an instance of a class in my Java program or my Kotlin program and I want to send that to another computer. How do I do that? Well, the first thing I have to do is figure out how to take that data and convert it into a string. And this is the process of serialization in one sentence. Now, one of the things that's cool about this is if we pick a format that many other computers understand how to use, we can actually send that data between two different computer programs that are written in different programming languages. So for example, I can write code in Kotlin that communicates with a server that's running Python or JavaScript or Haskell. The serialization format that we'll be discussing, JSON is one of the most common and it's supported by every single programming language that you will ever use. So if you have a piece of data that's stored in JSON format, you can send that to pretty much any computing program, any program written in any language, and that program can then take that string and sort of deserialize it and turn it into an instance of a class or a struct or whatever that programming language supports. One important thing about this though is that the only information that is typically contained in a serialized object is data. We don't serialize the methods. So imagine my Kotlin class where I have properties. It's the values of those properties that end up being serialized, not the methods themselves. So the methods really don't go along with the data. Serialization takes, you know, we talk about objects combining state and behavior. Serialization takes the state, converts that to a string, allows us to send it somewhere else. The behaviors don't go along, right? So I might have two different programs, one written in Python, another written in Kotlin. The Kotlin uh, program might have certain methods attached to an object that allow me to operate on it. The Python program might have different methods attached to an object with the same fields that it uses internally, but when they exchange information using JSON or some other type of serialization format, what is transferred is just the data that that, that, that class or that object contains, which is normally sufficient. Um, so this is actually a really tremendously powerful concept. It's something that underlies pretty much all of the communication that goes on across the internet. If, if you were able to you know, grab a little piece of the internet and spy on the traffic that was flying across it, what you would see is a lot of various types of serialized data, right? Whether that's you know, the data that you exchange with various websites when you use them or with you know, the, the CS124 website that you're using, all that data is being exchanged back and forth in JSON. You can see actually a lot of it flying around. Um, so this is really, really a, a common way for two computers to talk to each other. And so a very, very powerful concept and idea for us to understand.